हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश चोखानी अ पीडियाट्रिशियन फ्रॉम बैंड्रा एंड टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग ऑन हिस्ट्री टेकिंग अ स्किल हिस्ट्री इज नॉट जस्ट गैदरिंग सम इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड रिकॉर्डिंग इट इन फैक्ट अ वेरी टाइनी पार्ट ऑफ हिस्ट्री लाइक नेम एज सेक्स एड्रेस एक्सेट्रा मे बी कॉल्ड जस्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन गैदरिंग बट इवन देयर वी गेट सो मच ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन For example, certain diseases occur at certain ages, or certain diseases are more common in certain communities. So there is a lot of science behind history taking, and if we need to get the maximum out of any history, it has to be taken skillfully. In other words, we need to cultivate, practice, and perfect the art of history taking using some skills. a skillfully taken history can provide the provisional diagnosis in almost 85% of the cases so let's understand what are these skills involved in good history taking first and foremost we need to ask the person who knows in adults it's very easy it obviously is the patient himself or herself but even there many times some well meaning relatives hijack the lead role and then it is up to us to go back to the patient and at least verify the contentious issues if not take the whole history from the patient in children the parent accompanying the child may not know all the details and therefore we need to get back to the parent who knows the details or the grandparents or even the maid who looks after the child for that matter in older children they themselves can add crucial bits to the history and give us a truer picture in a recent video dr amdekar has already outlined the communication skills that are required by all doctors to begin with while history taking we need to establish a good rapport with the patient and therefore we need the first important part of this communication skills which is listening skills which dr amdekar so nicely clarified in the previous video we need to be attentive to what the patients are speaking and not ideally multitasking at the same time so that we register correctly what the patient has just said and at the same time we convey our involvement and commitment to try and solve their problem in other words our body language matters so does theirs if the patient is narrating the history with extreme anxiety and our subsequent assessment and examination finds it disproportionate then this might give us a clue that there's a strong functional overlay to the problem when we are listening to the history we are also looking at the body language to see with how much confidence the patient is answering our questions because then we can decide whether these facts are dependable or the patient is not sure coming to the content of the history history is his story and on another note history is not his story let us understand what these contradictory statements mean when we say history is his story what we mean is that after taking a good history we should be able to pictureize in our mind a complete sequence of events in the form of a coherent nice story from the beginning to now for this we should ask the patients to start speaking themselves in their own language to begin with but then at appropriate points we need to dig in for details and at times almost cross examine for example when a patient says that his child is running fever for last 3 months and is not eating if we were to take this history limited to listing these complaints anybody would think that tuberculosis is a possibility but after we dig and cross examine we might find that this child was absolutely all right 3 months back had two short lasting febrile episodes of 3 days each with cold and cough 
two months apart and was well in the interfebrile and in the interepisode period. This child has always been eating the same, which is poor as per parents' expectations. Now, this is what we call his story. This history recreates the whole picture and now tuberculosis is nowhere in consideration. This art and skill of cross-examining is also useful to judge the severity of complaints. Many times parents complain that the child has not even eaten a morsel of food but on cross-examining you find that the child has been drinking milk all right. Or when an adult with tonsillitis complains that even after taking medicines for three days I am not better and on cross-examining you find that the strip of six tablets which should have got over by now has still three tablets left. The art of digging for details is also very important and there are certain details which are so important that we need to be persistent and patient. For example, if we ask the patient, have you been running high fever each day for the last three days? The patient often answers, Doctor, I have fever even now. If you were to carefully look at this, this is not the answer to your question. So at such times you have to rephrase the question and if you were to ask, are you running high fever for the last three days, morning, afternoon, evening and night, you might get a different answer. When we say history is not his story, what we mean is, that we are not going to take everything that the patient says as verbatim. Very often, patients start with their complaints and then quickly move on to what investigations have been done or what the previous doctor said or what treatment was given. Now, though they are narrating a story with twists and turns, this story of his is not what we want. What we want is a history which is unadulterated of the actual illness based on which we are going to make our unbiased judgments. So we need to skillfully bring back these rambling digressors if we may call them back to the context of discussion and extract what is important for us. There are many occasions when patients speak something but they may mean something totally different and we need to clarify the terms used by the patients. It is very classical for an adult to come saying that he, has, he or she has a throat infection. We may jump to the assumption that he has fever and throat pain but he may have neither and he may just have a throat irritation which is leading to a repeated throat clearing or a very superficial cough. Many such misleading terms used by patients include cough or chest congestion or stomach upset or indigestion where we really do not know what the patient exactly means. When we are taking a history, we need to ask a mix of open and closed questions. An open question is one where there are many answers, whereas a closed question is one where the answer is only either yes or no or something like that, only two variables. Now many times when the patient does not know the answer correctly or are not sure, they may randomly pick one of them which for them may not make a difference but for you or me it could be a make or break difference or it may lead us down the wrong path. For example, when we are suspecting a pseudo seizure, a closed question would be, were the eyes open? And if the patient randomly says yes, you are misled. But an open question would be, how were the eyes? And you will get your true answer. The tongue does not ask what the mind does not know. When we are taking a history, we have a purpose in mind. So everything that the patient says, leads to some interpretation in our mind, we form a conclusion which fuels our next question and so on and so forth. So in other words, history taking is thought in action and this is the only way that we can get the different parts of the provisional diagnosis as will be explained in more detail by Dr. Amdekar sir in one of the subsequent videos. So friends, 
history can give us almost 85% of the times a provisional diagnosis. So much so that we can actually anticipate the physical findings based on our provisional diagnosis and if we happen to get findings which are different from what we anticipated, we can actually go back to the history to check where we went wrong in either taking the history or in interpreting it. This kind of an exercise can be a self-learning exercise and go on improving our history taking skills. And this is very important because at least in primary care, simple history can rule out so many differentials and avoid investigations for the same, thereby cutting costs and even the potential confusion. Thank you. The next video will be by Dr. Kharay sir on follow simple rules of history taking.